Welcome to NPTEL uh, module on advanced geomatics engineering. Today in this lecture we will learn about the basics of geomatics engineering, what the geomatics engineering is and what are the different data products which are involved in geomatics engineering and how we can apply it to different projects. We know that the uh, world is rapidly changing and we need the data at a very, very fast pace, whatever changes which are taking place on the earth surface. So, if you look at the geomatics engineering, the word geo means the earth surface and matics word is made from the word mathematics and then that means that we are doing the mathematical calculations of the earth surface. So, in geomatics engineering basically we are using the principle of mathematics to do the computation of the earth surface. These computations could be the distance measurement, coordinates, computations or elevation measurement. Wikipedia defines the geomatics engineering or it is also known as surveying engineering. In some of the literature you will find geoinformatics word is used, geospatial engineering or geospatial technology. They are conveying almost the similar meaning. Uh, the whole idea behind this terminology is to gather the data, to store the data, to process the data and to analyze the data of the earth surface and that we call as the geo data or geographical information. And this geographical information basically is geo referenced, especially referenced with respect to some coordinate system. Now, we look at the uh, geomatics engineering. So, what we are doing is that different data products we are collecting uh, from the earth surface and storing in the form of a different layers. So, we are collecting the data from the earth surface using various tools, various instruments which uh, are used in advanced uh, surveying and storing that data in digital form and analyzing this data for various project sites. So, today the data is considered to be the wealth of a nation. So, if we have the data then probably we can do the monitoring properly and we can do the forecasting properly. About the concepts of geomatics, it includes as you can see in this figure, it includes the geodesy about the earth shape, mathematical calculations once we collect the data we are doing certain computations to determine the area of the ground, to compute the volume of the earth surface, to determine the coordinates of various points and we are applying this to several engineering problems. So, this is what the geomatics engineering is and you can see that, that there are various disciplines now we are involved in geomatics engineering. So, what the geomatics engineering is? It involves the collection of the data about the earth surface using various geomatics tools, instrumentation. There are various techniques also, software based techniques which we are applying when the data is big and data is large then we cannot handle it manually. Then there are certain models which are to be developed. We have to create the geo database so that we can use this geo database for making certain query for extracting the uh, useful data or carry out the data mining from the data set. So, this involves lot of human computer interaction and we are using nowadays lot of tools which are uh, you know wireless tools which can provide us the data which can transmit the data to our system and we can use that data sitting in our laboratory. In other words, what I say is that the ICT information and communication technology and IOT, they are also playing very, very important role 
when we want to collect the data, when we want to analyze the data, when we want to study the trend of the data and we want to do the forecasting or prepare some kind of a time series maps and predictions. So, it is a very much part of the IT technology. So, geomatics engineering basically will provide one of the inputs to IT or to digital India. If we look at the uh, instrumentations, well there are very very large number of instruments nowadays which are used. Earlier those who have the knowledge of surveying, they have used a traditional kind of equipment to collect the angular data to collect the distance measurement to collect the elevation data and then later on doing the computation to determine the coordinates to determine the distance between various points area of a figure or the volume computations. But nowadays because the instruments have become digital they are very light compact they are very very accurate they are automatic in nature. So, the data can be collected very very quickly very very fast. So, we are actually going to learn all these uh, instrumentations that how these instrumentation could be used in order to collect the data about the earth surface. So, in this figure you can see on the top is a, a instrument which we call as a total station or some people call it a electronic theodolite because the data is collected in digital mode. This is stored in digital mode, analyzed in digital mode, but the advanced version of the electronic total station are robotic total station or laser based devices. So, where the manpower requirement becomes further low and data collection becomes much much faster. So, these devices basically are providing us the coordinates of various objects on the earth surface and this is what exactly we want in geomatics engineering the coordinates. Earlier in surveying techniques our conventional instruments are based on distance and direction measurements, but today if you see all these digital equipment they are based on the coordinate measurement and we can calculate actually the direction and the distance from those coordinates. The second figure on the top it shows a GPS a handheld GPS. We all are familiar with the GPS because this is available in our vehicle for navigation purpose maybe in our mobile also we are using various applications, but here we are using the GPS for data collection of the earth surface and mapping purpose and carrying out certain computations which are very very useful to civil engineers or engineering projects. So, this GPS device will also give you directly the coordinates x y and z coordinates of the points in terms of the latitude, longitude and the height of the points. The figure on the, the in the second row figure on the left basically it is a laser based device. So, laser techniques have become quite popular in surveying also lot of advanced equipment in surveying they are laser based and we can collect the data very very quickly with less manpower. So, these laser based equipment they are giving us point cloud data very very dense data. So, that means large data set you can collect in a very short time, they are highly accurate. So, you can create the model a 3D model, you can create a visualization which is completely a new upcoming area in geospatial science. So, you can create the visualization, you can carry out the measurements from the 3D model. In the center what you see is the GPR ground penetrating radar and as the name itself is suggesting that the rays radar beams are entering into the ground penetrating into the ground to a certain depth and giving us the information what is below the ground. So, all our utility mappings which are buried below the ground can be very easily mapped with the help of the GPR devices. 
The third figure in the second row right is the satellite image, high resolution satellite image. It has created a revolution if, in fact, uh, when we are talking about the large scale maps. Because in many of the engineering projects, we need data, detailed data, we need large scale maps and they were e not available earlier. So, the uh, time uh, consumed was quite large when we go out in the field, carry out the uh, survey work and use those conventional devices, it was really a very, very tough job to carry out the work. But nowadays high resolution satellite data, we sit in the laboratory and finish some of the work using those images. And with the availability of those images on Google Earth, now a common man also is familiar with those images and they are popularly known as the Google images, but they are high resolution satellite images from various satellites and these provide us very detailed information and we can use them for planning our projects, for designing the projects. The next one in that uh, bottom left side is the laser technology, the LIDAR technology mounted on the aircraft, so airborne. So, when the area is large, when suppose we are working in a very, very large area, a watershed or along a river which is in the gorges where it is not possible to actually visit the ground physically, we are carrying out the airborne survey. We are collecting the data uh, through the aircraft mounting the device which we call as the LIDAR and this is again collecting the point cloud data of very large number of points in the shortest possible time. So, here also we are getting x, y, z coordinates. So, you will find that uh, all these devices are providing us x, y and z coordinates of the ground, features and ground, objects or targets. The last figure here is the popularly known as a drone. This is also called unmanned aerial vehicle, technical term is unmanned aerial vehicle, but popularly known as a drone and uh, drone uh, is used for surveying and mapping purpose. Although it has multiple applications and particularly the people are aware after the COVID-19 that it has been used for very, very large number of applications. But in civil engineering, in geomatics engineering, we are using for collecting the data from a lower height and using this particular data to prepare different kinds of thematic maps. Not only the static map, but the dynamic maps can also be created. For example, the crop damage assessment can be carried out with the help of the uh, drawn data. We fly at two different times and superimpose the data and can find out what is the damage to the crop. So, all these tools and technology are very, very helpful to us in geomatics engineering in order to uh, collect the data about the earth surface. So, what we can do in uh, when we collect the data, we apply the geospatial technology, we can solve the complex problems. Now, when we are dealing with a project, maybe uh, we have to align a road, we have to align the railway line or we have to maybe align a tunnel. So, there could be very complex problems which are not simple in nature, which are not repetitive in nature, but it involves lot of engineering, it involves lot of technical uh, uh, parameters. So, it can actually solve the complex problems because you have the data which is collected from the different sources and the data collected from different sources will give you vast amount of information about that area. You can understand those complex problems and provide the answers of this is very, very important and you will learn when we explain GIS, geographical information system, the query system, what, where, when, who, how and why. You know normally we say that in engineering these questions are also very, very important and 
in geomatics engineering GIS can provide the answers of these questions. So, whenever we are planning something you know we have the curiosity in our mind what will happen if I change the parameter what will happen to my alignment whether the alignment length will change or direction will change. So, that kind of you know scenario we can create uh, and see what is the impact if I change my input parameter what is the impact on my output. So, this is very very useful in order to derive the optimum results. So, this query system we can very easily develop in GIS and get the answer of our problem. The another advantage of this is the data fusion technology from integrate the data from the different number of sources. So, we have the data from ground based devices equipment, we have the data from the satellite, we have the data from the airborne or drone systems. Now, integration of this data because they are available at different scales and different resolutions with different accuracies. So, integration is again a big issue and we can integrate all this data into our GIS system and create the knowledge and create the information from this data which is required for the project purpose. There are actually four main tasks which we are performing in geomatics engineering. What are those? Collection and processing of geodata. Very first thing is that we have to uh, understand the ground, we have to understand the extent of the ground, we have to understand the topography of the ground and then decide how we are going to collect the data about that piece of land. So, it depends upon our project, it depends upon the objective for which the data is being collected. If the area is huge, let us say in case of a river valley projects, in case of a watershed, probably our approach would be different if we are designing a dam over a river or if we are designing a housing complex in the area. So, depending upon the project requirement, depending upon the area, depending upon the topography and the kind of features which are present in the area, we are going to decide how we are going to collect the data, whether we have to physically go to the ground with those modern devices and modern instruments in order to collect the data and how then we are going to process the data. Because processing the data is another very big issue and very challenging issue particularly when the data is huge. So, today, today we are talking of the big data and big data we are talking in geomatics engineering also. Because when uh, we are collecting the huge data, point cloud data let us say for a large area and this is a time series data. then it becomes a big data. So, how to process the big data, how to handle that big data, this is another issue, challenging issue and we have to understand what is the right approach, what is the right kind of a algorithm which we have to apply to the data. Then the next task in geomatics engineering could be development and management of the database of the geodata. So, once we have collected the data, we are creating a database of the entire thing. Now, this database will have two components, one component will be in the form of the maps what you see on your screen and another will be a database, database would be in the form of the tables like your excel sheet. So, you have to maintain the two, you have to create the two spatial maps and the database and then you have to manage the database because your data could be huge. You are not dealing with just one thematic map, maybe you are dealing with very large number of thematic maps. Let me take the example, suppose we are working on some project in a watershed and we have a land use map as one theme the water resources in that area is another theme, we have the road network as the third theme, the urban setup is the fourth theme, elevation is the fifth one. So, we have uh, several themes together and for each theme we are going to create a map 
as well as the database and then we are going to integrate that database together. How we are going to manage that database so that after combining this together I get the desired results. The next component is analysis and modeling of the geodata. So, this is a very very useful capability of the software GIS software which we will learn in geomatics engineering how to carry out the analysis as per my project objective, how to carry out the modeling of the data. Suppose in this watershed I have to carry out the rainfall runoff modeling, I have to determine the runoff through the models, I do not have the measuring stations and if I can determine how much runoff would be available at a particular point in this watershed using those parameters indirect parameters then I have to carry out certain modeling. So, there are many problems where we are using the input data defining some kind of a relationship uh, and develop that model run that model. So, we have to analyze the data we have to do sometimes the modeling of the geodata. So, we have to understand this aspect. The next one is development and integration of the geodata using those software and the tools. Now, this is also very very important we are not using the data in isolation in many of the projects. We are requiring so much of data from geomatics tools and also we may require population data the socioeconomic data, we may also require uh, the other uh, data sets uh, in our project where we have to integrate all these together. So, how to integrate the data this is also uh, a, a little complicated issue and uh, we have to understand that this all the data layers should be geo referenced together which was the basic definition of the geomatics which I explained you. So, once uh, this is geo reference then integration becomes very very easy and then you can generate actually new products. So, when you are integrating 5 layers you can generate one more layer of the data 6th layer that is your output that is a new layer. So, output can be generated very easily by learning that. This diagram is showing you uh, the geospatial uh, technology and here we have 4 very important components. As you can see here the GNSS this is basically uh, the uh, data collection with the GPS technology. So, we are collecting the data uh, from the uh, GPS we have earth observation systems where there are various kinds of the satellites and we have the aerial based survey we have the drone based data available with us. So, there are high resolution data, there are multi spectral data, there are hyper spectral data, thermal data, microwave data. So, all sorts of data is available to us from the earth observations. Then we have scanning methods here as you can see the we can collect the data from the lidar technology, we can collect the data from the radar technology laser scanning data. So, again it is a huge kind of a data sets which we are getting through the geospatial technology and tools and we are basically uh, using the GIS and spatial analytics also to uh, collect the data through the mobile or analyze the data through the mobile or maybe we are using the uh, cloud resources to store the data and so on. So, these four components of the geospatial technology are very very important and uh, you will learn all these uh, technologies uh, in this particular module. Now, uh, what we say is that the geometrics uh, engineering is no more under the domain of civil engineering it is become multidisciplinary tools. If we look at the uh, applications if we look at the specializations the areas where people from the different background and different specializations are working together 
uh, and using some source or the other may not be using all, but may be using GIS, may be using only GPS. So, they are using the geomatics tool, they are using the geomatics uh, tech, uh, technology uh, and uh, applying this to their area of interest to the project. So, there are actually large number of disciplines which are listed here right from the cartography, geodesy, photogrammetry, remote sensing to laser, GPS, web mapping, computer science, computer vision which is a very uh, upcoming area, mobile and game technology also uh, this geomatics engineering tool is playing very, very important role. Then we have the internet of things where uh, the uh, uh, tools are connected together and they are providing me the data. There are um, some major disciplines and these major di disciplines are photogrammetry, remote sensing, GPS, GIS, laser based technology and drone technology. So, these components you are uh, going to learn here when we define photogrammetry, it is basically the art, science and technology of obtaining the very reliable information about the physical objects on the ground from a distance, from a height. And we use this data uh, basically for carrying out the measurement and carrying out the interpretation of these images. Now, the uh, output what we get from the aerial photographs is uh, in the form of the maps, in the form of the 3D maps, digital elevation model or in the form of the coordinates which we can further use in the GI. When we are talking of the second component in this the remote sensing, here we will deal mainly with the satellite images. Uh, various kinds of satellite images they could be used to prepare thematic maps of vegetation cover for example, the water, soils, geology and so on. So, various kinds of thematic maps can be derived and sequential images, you know time series images could be used to determine the changes because there are many, many objects which are changing on the earth surface. There are natural calamities which are changing the landscape. So, all that can be carried out with the help of remote sensing. GPS, we know that it is providing us the coordinate system. So, these coordinates are very, very helpful basically for the navigation purpose. So, navigating from one point to another has become very, very easy and this property, this principle we are using for designing various projects, whether it is a highway or railroad or mining or any other telecommunication related um, projects, we are using the global positioning system in then UAV and drone, because we can get very, very high resolution data from a lower height. So, uh, also we can fly to the area as many times uh, as we want. So, th these images have become very, very popular whenever we are talking of mapping of the agriculture. Maybe we have to monitor the crop growth, we have to determine the crop yield or maybe uh, uh, in flood prone area, we are going to study that how the flood is affecting the people or development of the smart city. So, these uh, images are playing very, very important or mainly because of their high resolution and uh, uh, availability of uh, multiple times images. GIS is a very useful geographical information system because the data which we are collecting from the various geomatics tools, we are not going to handle them manually. We are using this particular software where the maps, spatial maps data and the database, uh, we are handling it very, very effectively integrating the data to derive the results. So, for a particular project, we can actually integrate the data according to our model and derive very useful results. There are hardware and software service providers in our country and nationally also and they are known internationally also. There are some international companies which are providing us uh, software, which are providing us the hardware, which are providing us the geospatial services. 
For example, the Leica geosystems, Bentley systems, Integraph, PCI geometric, they are well known internationally and they are provide, providers of the major software. And similarly, there are industries which are providing us the tools, hardware tools and the instrumentation in order to collect the data from the ground. So, why should we study the geometrics engineering? We know that India is used for its IT skills and India is uh, um, in the uh, forefront as far as the space programs are concerned. We have a very good infrastructure and expertise available in the country in geospatial data, but we have the shortage of manpower, a skilled manpower is not available. To that extent what is required in our uh, ongoing projects in the country. So, this is uh, become very popular not only for the students who are studying surveying or remote sensing or civil engineering, but many students with architecture background or computer science or IT or data science background you know they are also learning uh, the tools of geometrics engineering and many institutions have introduced this either as a compulsory subject or the optional subject. Government of India is also making very liberal policies to collect the geospatial data to share the geospatial data so that it could be used for the uh, uh, benefit of the society for uh, uh, developing the projects and commissioning the projects successfully. So, what is the status of uh, geomatics engineering in India? We have a digital India concept, we have several such projects smart city concept, we have the startup India, make in India or interlinking of the rivers or uh, uh, Delhi industrial Mumbai corridor or the smart city project or smart agriculture project. So, these are you know very big projects in our country which are going on and in fact, the use of geospatial technology has become mandatory because it not only saves manpower, but it provides you very accurate data in the shortest possible time. It saves ultimately uh, the cost, it becomes economical, the project data collection becomes economical. So, geospatial uh, service providers actually are using this geospatial data in our country in India in various fields right from the infrastructures to land administration, whether we are talking of the agriculture or urban development or mining area or water resource management. So, this slide shows the dark uh, blue color is indicating that the current focus is on the dark blue color is the current focus and the light blue color is indicating that likely to be used in the future. So, you can see here the infrastructure is on the top. So, we are using uh, geospatial tools for uh, monitoring the infrastructure or for design and development of the infrastructure. If we look at the global market, what is the global market of geospatial tools? You know the uh, predictions for 2027 they are shown actually in this particular slide and it says that the global GIS market has been valued actually. Um, US dollar 177.3 billion in 2027. So, it is the predictions. So, on the basis of the past trend which you can see in this slides, the future predictions have been done. So, that means there is a huge scope, there are huge potential to use this particular tool in our various applications. There are large number of benefits when we are using the geomatics engineering, we get better precision and the accuracy in our project in our work. There are enhanced data safety, security and control because there are many devices uh, where you do not have to go the instrument will cover or collect the data from a distance. Your decision making becomes quite fast actually when you have um, data collected from the various sources and very detailed information. Ultimately it becomes cost effective because uh, huge data you have collected in the shortest possible time and uh, the analysis is much much faster using the tools. So, it leads to the higher productivity and increased transparency and better planning. So, these are some of the benefits of using the geospatial technology 
in various projects. So thank you very much.